Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the ZWO ASI 2600mm Pro. I'm going to be going over some of the stats and the configurations that I'm planning on using it in and just my initial rough thoughts of the camera. So let's get started. The sensor is an IMX571 Sony sensor and that is an APS-C size sensor. The pixel size is 3.76 microns with a quantum efficiency of 91%. It's got a full well of 50,000 E, but I think that the biggest spec that everybody's really concerned about is, is that it's got a native 16-bit ADC. And that gives a significant improvement to the image sharpness and contrast, even over a 14-bit ADC. So first let's compare the 2600 with the ASI 6200. They are almost identical in every way. There's very subtle differences, but the main thing is between the two of them is just that the 2600 is an APS-C size sensor, while the 6200 is a full frame sensor. There are a few differences, but I don't know if there's anything worth noting. Full well on the 6200, um, tops out at 51K, where the full well on the 6200 is only at 50K. The noise is about the same, the read noise that is, and the DR stops are about the same. Pretty much across the board, the same specs. The, the pixel size, quantum efficiency, it's all really the same, except that the 2600 is smaller and, of course, much less expensive. Now for a bigger contrast comparison, let's go the other way and let's look at the 294. The 294mm Pro is a much smaller sensor. It's a 4 3rd size sensor and I think the biggest difference between the two cameras is that the 2600 has that native 16-bit ADC which will give you a much better tonal resolution than the 294's 14-bit ADC. Let's go down the list real quick because the full well on the 294 is actually 66K compared to the 50K of the 2600. The DR stops are about the same at 13.5 when you're at unity gain. And the read noise is a little bit better on the 2600. This current configuration that I have it in now, I've actually got the tilt plate still on the camera. And I've got the two millimeter adapter that goes from the camera's tilt plate to the filter wheel. I'm not sure if you can make that out, but it's right in between here. And it's adding about seven millimeters of backspacing between the five millimeter tilt plate and the two millimeters for the adapter. So what I'm gonna do is take apart the filter wheel and take the tilt plate off and then do a bolt-on configuration so that I could remove that seven millimeters. And then I'm gonna try and get seven millimeters on the other side here of the, the other side of the filter wheel that's facing the telescope so that I can keep all of my configuration on my off axis guider the same and I don't really have to find focus again. So in order to bolt on the camera to the filter wheel, I did have to take the filter wheel apart and I removed one of the filters. I remo actually removed the luminance filter. And if you can see here, there's a screw right here and a screw right here. And then there's one on the other side as well, right here. I hope the camera can pick that up because I can't see through it. And then there's another one right there. So using those four screws, you're able to bolt the camera directly onto the filter wheel. Now here's the difference. The camera is bolted directly onto the filter wheel and I've added a six and a half millimeter connector between the OAG and the filter wheel to replace the seven millimeters of spacing that I had because of the adapter and the tilt plate. I also wanted to point out that I've got the, where you see this black dot on the camera, that is the actual top or bottom. It's, it's the length part of the sensor. And what I try and do is get it equal with the prism so that you don't get 
the, the shadows from the OAG into your image. Those usually are removable as well with flats, but again, I'd like to get the image to be as clean as possible before taking the flats. Now, when I have the reducer on my Edge HD8, I'm going to get vignetting no matter what because the reducer, the field of view in the reducer uh, comes out to, I believe, 26.7 millimeters, 27 millimeters, and the sensor on the 2600 is 28 millimeters. So I'm always going to have some vignetting. Now, I have tested this out and it calibrates out with flats just fine. Here's a single luminance sub of M94, and in the corners you can see the vignetting, and along the bottom you can actually see the shadow from the prism and the OAG. Now here's the uncropped luminance stack, and you can see that the vignetting has been calibrated out as well as the shadow from the OAG prism. The other way that you can configure this, and I have it in this configuration now, is without the reducer, and I've actually shooting this at the native focal length of 2032 and I'm currently trying it out on M106 I want to see what I get. Here's a single five minute blue filter sub and you don't see any real vignetting going on and you also don't notice any shadow from the OAG prism. And here is a stack of about 10 of those five minute subs from the first night of testing and again uh, everything's pretty much calibrated out with the flat frames. So if you're already using most of the other mono cameras that ZW offers, or anyone really for that matter, um, you're most likely going to have uh, one and a quarter inch filters or 31 millimeter unmounted filters in your filter wheel. And that just will not work with, with the 2600. Uh, I, my friend Glenn tried it when he first got his because I asked, I begged him to please try it because I couldn't afford at the time to upgrade my filter size, but I wanted to get the camera. And unfortunately, after looking at what he sent me back, um, it's, it's just not a viable option. So you will need to go up to 36 millimeter filters and a larger filter wheel, and that could get quite expensive. So unfortunately, I've, really, I've had some really bad weather. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside, but it's pretty bad. And I haven't been able to experiment as much as I would like to with the 2600. But my main plan is to be using that on my Z81. And I'm currently in search of a scope uh, that covers the 600 to 1000 millimeter range. And I'll be using that on that as well. And I think that the 294 would most likely live on my Edge HD8. Uh, after this. I think it's an amazing camera. It is better than the 294, but in this particular case where I'm trying to match it up with what I'm doing on the Edge 8, I think that the 294 actually comes out ahead uh, of the 2600. So I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button so that the video could spread to more people. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, please consider doing so as it really does help the channel. Now, if you have an Edge HD8 or any kind of SCT, I need you to check out this video on me collimating this thing right here.